Hello, and welcome to what I can only assume will be uh, one of the most difficult off-topics I've been a part of. My name is Jeff Ramsey. Uh, typically, Michael hosts it, but uh, given recent events, I asked him if I if I could come in and, and say a few things, and he was very gracious to give me this platform. Uh, with me, of course, as always, are Jeremy and Jack and Fiona and Gavin in no particular order. That's just the, it's just the order I saw them in. Um, <laughs> I uh, I have a lot I have a lot I want to say today about Achievement Hunter and our community and our failings, but I also do not want to give the appearance of uh, another white guy on a diatribe of platitudes. Um, and so I, I'm I'm a, I'm a little at loss as to how to proceed. Uh, and. Uh, so I'll, I'll just do my best. I'd like to say, well, first off, um, if you didn't see it, uh, a former Achievement Hunter employee named Mika Burton yesterday, in the wake of all of uh, the Black Lives Matter controversy that's going on right now and uh, this, this revolution that's happening, I think it's probably the new civil rights movement. I know we're all really raw and on edge right now because we're watching our country burn to the ground. And in that process, Mika shared her experience working at Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter. And it was like a fucking punch to the gut that I, I needed. Um, and I called her yesterday and I talked to her and I'm not going to share our private conversations. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's respectful, but uh, I'll talk about how, I want to talk about how, how I failed Mika. How, and I have a lot of reasons. I have a million reasons. None of them are excuses. I don't think there are excuses. Um, but I, I failed her as a friend, and I failed her as a coworker. And I, and I, and I guess I should say I failed the audience as well by not being a better example for you. I, uh, I'll be. I don't want to get sidetracked. I'm sorry. Uh, so. I wanted to have this discussion today, and I, and, I, and, I, and I told her in person, and I want to tell you, and I want to tell the world, that I am sorry to Mika for her experience working at Achievement Hunter and Rooster Teeth. I am sorry I was not a more vocal supporter of her. I am sorry I was so... I was in such a dark place, and it almost lines up to the T of when she worked here. Um, I think I was even on sabbatical at the end of this. I, uh, this is not an excuse, but I was, I was so consumed by my own pain. I was... I was my marriage was falling apart. I was an alcoholic. I was killing myself. I was depressed and I didn't realize it. And I was, I was in a very, very dark place. And that's not an excuse. I just was so blind to the pain going on around me. I just couldn't see it. I, I was so consumed with my own inner turmoil that I was just deficient as a friend and a coworker. And I was blind. And I, I'm so sorry for that. I wish that I could. I wish that I had been better. I wish that I had been stronger. I wish, I wish that I had figured my life out a lot earlier. <sighs> but I just, I just, I just need the world to know that I, there was no malice. <sighs> I, I loved working with Mika. I, I, I loved our friendship. I, I, I shit the bed on that. Um, once again, just being so up my own ass, dealing with my own issues. And uh, I have so many notes. I want to, I don't even take notes, but I just, I don't want to miss anything important. There's so much I want to say, but I guess more than anything, I, I just wanted to have this discussion and, and talk to current Rooster Teeth employees, current Achievement Hunter employees. Um, obviously, I helped create a culture of silence. Uh, and it affected uh, Mika probably more than the rest of us combined, but it definitely has affected Fiona, and it's affected Jeremy, and it's affected Lindsay, and Matt, and Jack, and Ryan, and anybody in our company, Barbara, that has received hate from our audience, and I allowed, I allowed us to be silent. And I have reasons for that, and they are not good reasons, but I, I, would, I would like to at least explain the thought process behind all of this. 
but I also don't, I, like I said, I don't want this to turn into some diatribe. And so I'd like to open the discussion up. I know, um, Fiona, you, you were in many ways Mika's spiritual successor um, as a female person of color who is, is a member of Achievement Hunter now. And I thought we had learned a lot from our failings with Mika. And uh, I'm learning that A, I didn't understand the depth of our failings any, at the time, but I, I also, I realized that I thought we had changed. I thought we'd gotten better. I think we have, I hope we have, but I don't know if it's to, to what degree. And so I wanted to allow you, I know that you, we had this discussion on off topic months ago and for you because you weren't able to be a part of it. And then um, that felt really unfair. And so we, we pulled it. Um, so that you could be a part of it. And, and, and I would like to offer you an opportunity to, to, to speak right now uh, about your experience here, about ways that I can be a better friend and coworker to you, ways that we as Rooster Teeth can support you more. Um, but more, I just, I just want to listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to try to make this make sense, but um, and sorry if I lose my English while I'm talking but um i think the main thing here is that i did not me and mika experienced similar things but mika experienced it at a different time it was it was not the same time as right now and i think a lot of you guys have opened your eyes up to issues that we have in the company and um but the main thing the main issue that I had was the first, I think the first six to eight months were absolute hell for me. And um, I felt, I felt alone because, because I didn't have anyone that could really relate to me. Um, really only Mika could. And, um, and I also just going a bit behind is that I, I met Mika before I got hired here and she told me, she told me how much pain she, she's, uh, dealt with here. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, there's no way I, I couldn't believe it because I, I have, I have met you guys before. And I was like, there's no way that, you know, these people could be doing that. And, um, and and she warned me, she warned me, she said, please be careful. And even during Overwatch League, we were even having our issues internally there because, you know, some commentators, they didn't really believe in us. Uh, we were, you know, we were two, we were the two colored women uh, in Overwatch League and they didn't really believe in us either. And we, we sort of had our, each other's backs during there. But, um, but the main thing is that I, felt alone and the, the reason why I felt alone was because I felt like anytime I would bring up the issue because I, I, I tried the best I could but the issue was that I would either be compared to Jeremy or I would be compared um, or I would be told to ignore them and I understand, and I, I want to make this clear. I understand that Jeremy and Alfredo have dealt, uh, Trevor have, everyone has dealt with some shit uh, when it comes to the audience. But the thing that they have not dealt with is that they they can be compared to someone else, and it, and they can be like, oh, these guys aren't funny. These guys are whatever. Like I don't care for them. Whatever. But for me, it might be the reason why people might not like me and the reason why people might not find me funny or might hate me is because of something I cannot change. And it's because I'm a woman and I'm a person of color. And I'm also fucking gay at that. So I, have, I am the complete opposite of a straight white male. So, and, sorry, and the world, that sees that as so different that it's possible that they it's it's just things i can't change i can't change it and people might just dislike me and might judge me because of that 
because of things that I was just born with. And um, I, 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 I hated knowing that if I was in a video, there would be more dislikes than likes because of it. Or like, or there would just be more dislikes than usual. Or that the video won't get as many views. And, and it's just, th it's things because I, that I can't change. And um, I just, just seeing the, the pe people making petitions, I'm disgusting. Look at me, hold on. I have to use my t-shirt. You're beautiful, um, Fiona. Sorry, thank you. No, I, I um, agree. That was gross, but that's okay. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, the petitions that were made to kick me out. Uh, the N-word thrown around. The, uh, the stalking. The harassment. I, I have physically, and I told Gavin this, and I, and I, I kind of s sort of told Jack, but like... The reason I hate, I fucking hate playing GTA is because every time I play GTA, I get death threats sent to me on Instagram. And I'm like, for what? Because I can't fucking play GTA? Because I don't know how to control? I've, I've never played GTA in my life. Why is that so important for people to, to send death threats to? It, 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 it makes no fucking sense. There must be some some hatred it, 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 it's not because i'm not funny and there's people who don't find me funny and there's people who don't like me and that's fine that's cool i'm not supposed to be liked by everyone and I, but there's some people that do really just not like me because of the way i was born just the, the, just and i feel like um the reason why i feel people need you guys especially to speak up about it is because there's a trend where racist people where shitty people love to congregate they love to be near each other they do not like being with anyone else they love to be near each other so the more the, the more silent you are the more you're letting it happen and the more they congregate the shitty person will be like hey i can say whatever i want here because they're not monitoring it they are not deleting the comments they are not they are not talking about it they don't care and they congregate and it becomes even more and more that's why i i am the soul i am i am so supportive of people calling that out and of people um and and replying to those shitty comments and i know the community man managers have been doing great but i've been told that apparently they don't like when i reply to them they don't like when I reply to these people on the on on RTTV and it's like or not RTTV, but just on the videos. And it's like, what am I supposed to do? Delete the comment, please get rid of the comment. Stop arguing with them. Stop letting them have a platform because there's a difference between having an opinion, giving criticism and just being outright hateful, hateful. And it, it, it I mean, it, 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 it makes no sense. So. I think at the end of the day, what I think you guys can do and what I think Rooster Teeth needs to just work on is getting rid of these fucking assholes and, and, and not being scared to call it out. It, you guys will not have any repercussions done to you. It cannot be worse than what I'm experiencing. You, okay. guys, you guys can take some heat and it's not even going to be a lot of heat. And I and and I also don't want to keep praising you guys when you do do it because you that's just a normal human thing to do. I I don't want people to tell you you guys are amazing, you guys are great because you wrote one tweet. This is a normal thing. You are not a great amazing person because you wrote that. You are a normal person who cares about their their employees and their coworkers. And I really. I, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to s sort of say in my, um, right now, but I, I just need you guys to know that I, I mean, I, I felt like shit before, but I, I, I learned and I, I became so headstrong that right now, none of this shit bothers me. And they, people could tell me that they fucking hate me, that I can go kill myself and it really doesn't faze me. And I think that is the saddest thing that i have ever said so i've 
obviously it's great that I'm this I'm this uh resilient, but at the end of the day, not everyone is going to be. And I'm lucky that I am, but if we have new employees come in and if we have this reoccurring thing where we need we need diversity, so we're gonna have to bring more black people in, we're gonna have to bring more colored people in. Um they are gonna have to deal with this. <laughs> And they don't have, they should not have to train themselves to be okay with getting death threats. That is not the way. And they should not train themselves for getting used to be, used to being called the N word. That is not okay. So I feel like we have a big, a, a, a big issue here where uh, we need to, we need to spotlight it. We need to talk about it. And it should not be talked about just this week. It should be talked about at any time, you know, any time, any day. Um, and and it, it's a conversation we need to continue having. And I think that's I think that's all I really wanted to say now. I'm sorry for the fucking boogers. I, I am so sorry. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. And you guys will never fucking see me cry again. This is it. This is it. Well, Fiona, I, I, I think I speak for all of us that we love you so much and Thank we are guys. better we are better because of you being here and thank you for talking my god yeah i uh i thought i understood fiona the the, the hate you were receiving and uh here we are on june whatever the fuck this is and i'm still learning um it's a big thing with my call with mika yesterday was she she very eloquently and very patiently explained uh the reality to me in a way that I, I was blind to. Um, and I've been blind to a lot of your pain as well. Um, and not just you, uh, everybody, you know, everybody that's received hate in our company, no matter what color or creed or orientation you are. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to, I'd like to go back in time a little bit to talk about how, how we arrived at this policy that we're changing. I, uh, I was, I am from the deep, deep South. I was born in 1975 and I grew up in a system in Alabama and Florida and Louisiana of endemic, of systematic, and honestly, really overt racism. I have, am very unfair to the South and the state of Alabama I, I shit talk them constantly because of how how much of a chip I have on my shoulder about being from that place and 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 my experiences there and, and seeing the kind of people that they that they were and it's unfair. I mean, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an achievement hunter episode without some kind of technical issues. So this seems very appropriate for. <laughs> okay. Um, and I thought that I was, ah, oh, Christ. Hold hold on. <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? We've got you. In You're wondering. Yeah, we're making sure we can, can hear, hear you on Jeff, the stream. But you guys can't hear Jeff um, at the moment. How about now? Any any good? Can I'm back? Okay. Uh, God, I, I continue to be uh, just a calamity of tech technological problems. <laughs> um, but I, I I thought I I thought I thought I was a reasonably progressive woke individual. Um. You know, I, and I thought I was, I was, what I was about to say is I, I thought I was an advocate. I thought I was, um, I thought I did, I thought I did a lot to help. I, I have, you know, gay rights. I have gay people in my family who I, I, I look up to and love dearly. Women's, I, I thought it was enough to go for a, to go a couple times a year. You go to a march, Black Lives Matter, women's reproductive rights, voting, uh, fucking pro-immigration rallies. Uh, donating money a couple times a year to, to charities and causes 
that I thought I was, I thought I was making the world a better place. I thought I was doing my job, but kind of going back to what Fiona said earlier, uh, that's just the fucking baseline minimum a decent human being should do. And, uh, and I've got to do better. I've got to be a stronger voice. I have a voice. I have a platform. Um, and I, I personally, I have to do a better job by you and for you. And I'm talking to Fiona and, and Mika and, and Lindsay and, and my daughter and everybody in our community. Um, but, but where I'm getting at is, I, I realize I'm starting to spiral a little bit. Where, where I'm getting at is, uh, because I'm older, it's not just, it's not just that I grew up with racism in a different time, but I'm, I'm, I'm from Gen X, which is a, a very overlooked generation. Uh, there's a lot of talk about millennials versus baby boomers and how Gen Z is our future. And they are, uh, but I existed in a really weird time where I'm kind of, I have one foot in the past and one foot in the present. And it's a really uncomfortable place to be sometimes. Uh, I, I was talking about this with Bernie last night. And I was talking about it with Jack today. Um, I think that part of my problem in accepting, well, I have an incident that I'll, I'll get into that really hurt me. But I think part of the problem that I have, and this antiquated thinking that I have, is that I was 19 years old before I saw the internet. I was 22 years old before I got my first computer. I lived in a time where social media didn't exist. The internet, and this is as I was, you know, even up to the point where we're starting Rooster Teeth and we're creating drunk gamers and ugly internet and all these projects that we had and, and using the internet as this tool uh, of creativity. It was kind of a toy to me then. It was, the internet was no different than a four-wheeler or a video game console. It was, it was new and emerging technology that was neat and fun to play with, but it didn't, it wasn't real. It wasn't tangible. And I realized that sounds really backwards and bizarre considering I created a, a company that existed on it and because of it and that we lived in it. But I had a, I just had a block in my head where I, I, I couldn't see it as anything more. And, and by the time social media came out and I'm in my thirties, uh, I, it's once again, social media is a, is a clever toy to play with. And for, for me and for, for guys like Jack, who are old and who lived a full life and who became adults before we were ever exposed to it. And I realized, and I don't know why I couldn't see this before, but I, I've been looking at my daughter a lot and I realized she's never grown up. She's grown up in a world of social media and Twitter and Instagram is as real to her as a newspaper was to me or the evening news. Twitter is, is an, as a real and essential way of, of, of her and the, and people around the globe to communicate in an instant, and I didn't respect those things because I lived in a world before them. And it, it's, 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 it's been a hard thing for me to wrap my head around and to understand that, that other people see social media and, these, and the internet in a very different light because they've only lived in a world with it. And I'm a fucking, I'm backwards and I have got to catch up. And I, uh, it's, it's really funny. Um, I, I, I've been thinking a lot about this, this conversation I had with, uh, with I, when I used to work tech support, that's where I met Bernie and Gus and we started Rooster Teeth. Uh, I was 23 at the time, 24, and I got a call from a guy who, uh, I, he, we, we did outsourced internet tech support. So he was having trouble checking his email, something really simple. And he was having trouble grasping it. And in the conversation, I could sense his frustration and I was trying to calm him down. And he kind of, he kind of unloaded on me and said, you know, or he gave me some advice, I should say. He said, I, I, was, I was you. In 1960, I was one of the people that helped build computers, and 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 I was one of the smart, young, intelligent, forward-thinking people in the world. And I am now in my 70s or however old he was, and I don't know how to check my email. And technology in the world has passed me by. And he said, uh, "Enjoy it while you can, because it'll happen to you." And I thought, I live in a world of technology; it'll never pass me by. What happened was. The world passed me by socially and I didn't see it. And I'm that guy. I feel like that guy now. And I understand what he meant. And uh, man, I just, I'm trying really hard to drag myself in, in, into today. And 
because of that and because of that line of thinking for G Bernie and Gus and, and, and I and, and Matt and everybody who was involved with Rooster Teeth in early days, uh, I can name them all. Kathleen, you Mary, Joel, Jason, Dan, Nathan, like all of them. <sighs> there was, in its infancy, there was, there was the, the, you've heard the term, don't feed the trolls. That, that was a very real thing and it made sense. It was if you, if you, gave if you elevated the vocal minority and you gave them a voice they would take it and they would run with it and and it was easier to not fan the flames not to give them oxygen and uh at some point the internet changed social the advent of social media changed it changed all of this and that's no longer acceptable and uh I, I, I understand that now, and I didn't at the time. And I think part of it was a blindness that I, that existed in me because of an event that I've shared, and, I, and I've been kind of disingenuous with how I've shared it. I, I talk about, and I, I've, I've had this conversation with most Rooster Teeth employees to try to prepare them for the onslaught of the audience, which can be wonderful. It can be overwhelmingly wonderful, and it can be... Uh, a, a thing that I didn't know until about 15 minutes ago, which is people sending death threats to a very dear person in my life because she isn't as good at GTA as they want her to be. And uh, early on in Rooster Teeth, after we created the, the community site, um, we released RT Comics. And uh, it's the first thing we did that got a, t a tremendous amount of hate and backlash. And it was brutal at the time, for the time. And at some point, I saw a comment from a user. This is, my daughter's maybe 18 months old, maybe a year, that said, uh, it's a great day to have somebody working on my yard. Um, <laughs> that said, uh, I don't know why Jeff considers and calls Millie his daughter when Griffin has been so filled up with cum by so many of the Rooster Teeth employees that it's really a crapshoot who she belongs to. And I lied. And I told, I've used it as an example of how I had made a decision that day that I could get on a plane and I could fly to where that kid lived and I could beat the shit out of them. Or I could not let it get to me. And I could not let words matter. And I could not, I could, I could be better than it and be above it. And I thought I did and I thought I was. But what I've learned over time is I just made a wall and I just refused to see I, I, I built a defense mechanism around the community and around our audience and around social media and around the internet that I, I just that I ref I just decided I wasn't going to let words bother me anymore. But what really happened, and I advocated for others to do that. But what really happened was, I just I just internalized it, and I lied to myself and I told myself I was over it and I told myself that I wasn't letting it bother me, but it did and it still does. Like twelve years later. <laughs> And I wish, and, and, and I got kind of broken that day by our community. <laughs> and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry that I lied to myself, and I'm sorry I lied to all of you coworkers. When I would give you that story, and I would tell you that if you don't let it bother you, it can't bother you, and to be better than it, and to rise above, because I'm not better than it, and it bothers me still. <laughs> and I, I, wish, I wish I had been able to be more honest with myself, and I wish I'd been able to be more honest with you. <laughs> because of that, we created this don't feed the trolls mentality that, that became antiquated too long ago when we were too slow to catch up. And I can't, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to all of you. And I'm sorry to, I just, oh man, I fucking hate it. I hate it so much. And I hate that I contributed to the hate that Mika got by being silent because I thought I was being a bigger person. And silence is acceptance, and I, I understand that in a way I didn't. And Mika helped open my eyes to that. 
The world has helped open my eyes to that for the last two weeks. Our beautiful, wonderful, grand experiment is failing. <laughs> and it's burning to the ground because of hatred. <laughs> and I just don't understand how we got here. Or why we're still here and why we haven't gotten better. I mean, I guess I do because I was complicit. I was complacent. I, I was ignoring things because it was easier to, to stuff it down than to, to do something about it and to stand up. And I'm not going to be quiet anymore. I'll never, I'll never be silent again, I, I promise you. And we have a, a, lot of, a, a lot of growth to do in Rooster Teeth and in Achievement Hunter. And um, there's a lot of that going on right now. I mean, this, this started a long time ago. Uh, we've been continually trying to become better people and a better company. Uh, obvi obviously, we have a long way to go. We need to get there faster. Um, and we've begun discussions internally, listening to our employees and people of color and, and, and really listening and hearing. And, you know, I want to make sure that the next person of color, the next person that gets hired at Rooster Teeth doesn't have to go through what any uh, of their predecessors did, but certainly not the kind of hate that Mika and, and Fiona have gone through. And I'm looking directly at you, person who threatens my coworkers and my friends who hates someone because of their sexual orientation or the color of their skin. I don't want you here. You're not welcome. This is not a place for you. This is no longer a place for hate. It never was. We just turned a fucking blind eye to it. And it's, well, I'm not doing that anymore. We're not doing that anymore. Go so, find somewhere else on the internet to live. If you want to threaten and seed and sow hatred and division in our community. You don't belong here. Um, well said. I've been spouting off for a minute. If anybody else wants to share anything, that that was well said, Jeff. Really. Thank you. Yeah, I, I I certainly need to address my um, shit past. Um, it's it's I I don't I I don't want to defend anything I've ever done at all. I don't want to seem like there's anything. To defend there's nothing to defend and i'm honestly such a coward for waiting this long to even talk about it but um i just used to say just shitty offensive things to um you know attempts to be edgy that that weren't weren't funny at all and this is this is behavior that i've made i've corrected honestly years ago but with the progress I've seen in myself, the each year that goes by, I I look back with more t disgust at the shitty edge lord that I was trying to be. I guess, and um, I I'm certainly not that person anymore, and a huge huge part of that is is owed to Mika for uh, just like j j giving me her perspective and I'm, I'm honestly I don't deserve to call her my friend and I'm I'm so thankful that I still can um it's it's hard it's hard to it's just so, so hard to say and I just deeply regret who I used to be. And it, it, it honestly just sounds so empty saying those words. Like, I feel like I hear that all the time, to be honest with you. People saying that they're not who they used to be. But um, obviously, I'm only at the beginning of all of this. I need to realize that being a cast member is so much more than showing up to videos and then leaving. It's about setting an example internally and externally and being vocal i mean we can have all the community managers in the world but no one will listen more to us and i've just like uh, jeff just touched on just been ignoring it the whole time and i'm just so sorry for that i mean that's been yeah i mean 
I've I've been working on the internet for, in some capacity for almost twenty years now, and um, like like Jeff said, yeah, the whole idea of don't feed the trolls. Like I, you know, I steeled myself off to that, and I've built walls. And I, I mean, in the early days of Rooster Teeth, I caught a lot of shit, and um, and I just kind of I trained myself to you know just to kind of push it away, and the idea of forcing someone to do that, especially now, I mean, we're, I mean, back then the internet was still a a relatively small place and now it's, it's, it's a part of our lives. And the idea of just telling something, Oh, just ignore it. Like, fuck that. No, no, we, you should, you don't shouldn't have to ignore it. Yeah. And I know, um, I, I mean, I fucked up. Like I, I should have, I should have been there. I should (sighs) have, I failed people and I, I know I've, I've done and said things that were horribly offensive and all we can do is, is, is try to try to learn from our mistakes in the past and be a better person. And change the planet for a better, for, for the future. Cause, uh, <laughs> I don't know how long this plan is going to be around, but I want to make it a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and, uh, thank you, thank you for sharing that, Jack. And I and I realize, you know, that we have so far to go, uh, and the audience is is very rightly going to say, uh, "Well, and now what? You know, um, what what are you doing two weeks from now?" Like like Fiona said. What are we going to be doing a month from now? What are we going to be two, doing two months from now? And I wish I had a magic bullet and easy answers, but I can only tell you that we are going to be better and that we're going to, that I'm, I'm going to be a better person. I'm, I, I fucking, I hope I am. I, but, but we as a company will no longer tolerate this kind of thing. We'll no longer brush it off and try to be tough about it. It's, it's unacceptable. The world is a different place than it was when we created this company. And at some point, we got behind that, and I, oh, we we can't. His mic is fuck, gone. I, I lost Jeff again. I know I'm all Shit. over the place, but I saw a video last night <sighs> uh, by a knows. community member, uh, uh, this hear wonderful us? woman named Lauren oh, uh, Brook, okay. who uh, it was it was painful. Fiona actually linked it, and I saw it through her. And uh, man, she she said a bunch that was really poignant uh, as a person of color in the Rooster Teeth community, and. Uh, the thing that she said that stuck with me the most was when the, when she looks at Rooster Teeth, she doesn't see herself reflected back. And I can look at this room right now, and there's fucking well, I can't see you all right now, but I think you're four white guys and a Fiona, and I I I never understood that before. Um, and I think that's the kind of thing that, as a white man, certainly at my age, I I don't I have a blindness to, because. I don't I don't know what it's like to feel a need to be represented because I've never not been represented. And it broke my it broke my heart to hear her say those things last night and and to know that it was true. And I I can say that we are I am going to try to amplify the voices of people of color and try to try to make the company that I'm a part of as diverse as the community that supports us because we are a diverse community. And, uh, and I, I, I've been trying to make a lot of changes in my life, even, even before this. Um, if, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to share a a little story and I hope it doesn't ring hollow. Um, there was this pandemic that kind of fucked things up for me, but, uh, early February, I went on a, a weekend trip to new Orleans with my girlfriend and her parents to get to kind of know them better. And her, her dad is really into tours and walking tours. And he scheduled us, I wish I could say I scheduled it, but he scheduled us a tour um, from a company called All About Dat Tours. Um, and uh, it was a black heritage and culture walking tour. And it started in Congo Square. And we showed up and we were four white people. We were the only four white people. And the entire rest of the tour was, was African-Americans. And uh, or black people, and uh, the the woman who ran the tour, her name is Michaela Iverson. She's a phenomenal lady. Uh, she's a, a soul and, and gospel singer and, and a tour guide. Um, 
she pulled us aside and she said, uh, I, I want to, I'm going to give you the opportunity to leave now because this is going to be a really uncomfortable tour for you. And it's going to feel like you're getting beat up. And I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you because this is a real tour and we're telling the truth and we're not going to whitewash it. And I, we were like, of course, absolutely. I, I, I want to understand. And, uh, first off, those, those people on that tour were so sweet and welcoming to us and they, they were, they were the kindest people. And that woman was the kindest woman. And she took us on this like three hour tour, two hour tour, maybe. And she would point out the other tours, the whitewash tours that were going on. And she would let us listen into a minute where they would talk about, oh, how African-Americans would all come down or Africans would come down on Sundays and play music and have a street fair and, and, uh, and, and sell wares to each other. And, and it was, it was the day that the, the slave owners gave them off to be themselves and have their own lives. And, and, and then she told us the truth and that people went to Congo Square on Sundays to get food because I didn't know this. There's a lot I don't know about my own past, my own history, this country's history. I didn't know that on Sundays, slaves didn't work, so they didn't get fed. And they were going down to Congo Square to try to, to share food with each other and to make sure that other slaves were getting nourishment. And they played music there because it was the only place they wouldn't be beaten or killed for playing it. And I learned so much walking through Treme with those people. And at the end, they took me to a black owned bookstore and they gave me a free lunch and they made me a part of their community. And I realized how little I know about inequality and racism and the dark, evil, angry past that we all come from in this country. And I was I just, and I, and I made it a point that day to, to educate myself and to be a better person. And then the pandemic hit and I got so fucking sidetracked with everything else in the world. And that's not, that's not acceptable. But then I'm, I'm reminded today, I'm, I'm sitting at my desk and right behind me are, uh, you can't see it all. And I'm not going to move my computer to show it to you, but it's four pictures of four inspirational authors that mean a lot to me. And, uh, and this is where this is where this is where prejudice. This is these are the, the subtle ways that inequality exists. I think that I'm starting to understand, and the Mika helps me understand. And and we started a dialogue yesterday that I hope I can continue with her because she was so insightful. And Fiona, I would I would love to have more of a dialogue with you because I want to understand more. And I have four authors hanging on my picture or on my wall here that are emblematic of who I feel like inside. You know, I'm an existentialist like Jean-Paul Sartre. I, I, I'm a fucking brutal alcoholic like Charles Bukowski. I think I can understand and speak to kids and people at, a, at an age like J.D. Stowner. And I think that I'm... And I have this picture of Ernest Hemingway holding a shotgun that he used to kill himself because I want to remind myself not to be that and not to allow myself to become that. And every one of them is a white man and why don't I have any, why don't I have people of color? Why aren't, why aren't there women hanging there? I have a picture of Shirley Jackson over there. I have one of Joan Didion in my hall, but what the, who cares? I love black authors. I love Marlon James. I love, I've been really getting into Percival Everett lately. Um, there are phenomenal inspirational authors like Ralph Ellison, who I'm only learning about now at this age. And, and, and I don't have them up there not out of hatred, but because out of ignorance, because this is the way inequality slowly creeps through the world and, and into our lives. I didn't, I, I didn't read those authors. They weren't presented to me. I, I, I had no access to them without seeking out, seeking them out, and I, and not knowing they existed. I, I didn't. They were largely invisible to me. And in little ways like that, I am ignorant. And also a lot of bigger ways. I'm fucking, I'm a, a giant failure of a human being in a lot of ways, but I, I'm starting to see that permeate and how it permeates through my life and how I'm ignorant of black culture because I was never exposed to it. And I thought I was, I grew up in Alabama in a town that was as almost as black as white, or maybe even a little bit more, but living around black people and other people of color. isn't 
understanding them and, and and thinking that you know i'm not racist and is enough it's not i i've been so ignorant to 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 so much of our country's past and and to the people that i care about and i've i've got a long way to go i've got a lot of a lot of learning to do about a, a very dark and painful past um so that I can learn to be better and so that I can see the blind spots that I have in my life so that I can understand why I have a four white guys on my wall and no person of color and, uh, and, and try to improve and, 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 and try to encourage others to improve um, and to learn and to be better. Um, there's a quote that I, when I get, when I need help, I, I go to literature. You know, it's it's my security blanket, but it's also my education. Because I didn't get much of one in Alabama, and I I wasn't looking for it at the time anyway, even if I wanted it. And uh, Ralph Ellison said something in An Invisible Man. <sighs> I just want to read it. <sighs> he says, uh, it's not the full quote, but it's it's the meat of it. He says, I'm an invisible man. No, I'm not a spook like those who haunted Edgar Allan Poe, and I'm, nor am I one of your Hollywood movie ectoplasms. I am a man of substance, of flesh and bone, and fiber and liquids, and I might even be said to possess a mind. I am invisible, understand, simply, simply because people refuse to see me. I don't want to refuse to see people anymore. I see you. <laughs> I don't. I don't really have anything else to say. I. I think you know. I. I. What I want to just put in here is that, just like you said, Jeff, there's you are represented everywhere, and I'm. I'm happy you're. Can't noticing. hear anybody. I'm sorry. Oh, you can't. I can't hear you. If you can hear me. Jeff can't we hear just, me. We need to get him back on Discord. I guess. Yeah. Um. Either way, uh, can... I think. Can you still hear me? Can you hear us? I, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear you. Uh, I, I guess I didn't realize I couldn't hear you even when I was giving that speech. Yeah, you're fine. I, we weren't talking. Um, yeah. I think uh, you made a really good point of, of, of mentioning that you, you are represented. You are, um, you see white people everywhere. You people, people, you can see someone and be like, yes, I, I relate to this person. He looks like me. He uh, feels like me, and um, I, I, it hurts to see when, and I was, I, I, you know, I watched Lauren Brooks, um, I watched her, her video yesterday, and it's exactly what I'm talking about, where it's like, if you have these black fans who look up to you guys and who love our content, who love our content, I mean, they they watch us. Um, God, I hear myself twice. I fixed it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, they they look up to us. They watch our content. They love our content. They they sometimes they dream to be in that type of content. And unfortunately, if we just keep on putting white men on there or white women too, they can't see themselves in there because there's no one there that looks like them that 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 feels like them that understands their struggles and and it's so important to to have that because how else are they supposed to relate like I, i'm sorry I'm, I'm trying to find the right words but just how are they supposed to relate to the content if they can't see themselves in there and how are they supposed to feel like we care for them if they can't see um if they can't see us uh, see them in there and i i think it's so important and i think it's something that we need to work on which is maybe instead of putting out that five uh, uh that content that features five white men why not we figure out a way uh, to, to to add in some diversity it, it doesn't hurt you it doesn't hurt anyone because we can, we make so much content that everyone will be able to be in it where it's like 
it, it just sucks. It sucks. Like, you know, I, I'm making videos with Lindsay and I know those aren't going to do a lot of numbers. And unfortunately, we're going to have to stop making that video. Like we started doing Sims 4 and we were told it wasn't getting enough views. And the one thing with that is we have to normalize it. We have to normalize. Yes, there's women on screen. There's black people on screen. There's colored people on screen. We can't it shouldn't be foreign to our fans to see someone different. They should not be reacting so, so, so much because there's someone different. They shouldn't see me and they shouldn't see Jeff and be like, wow, they're so completely different. We're not, we're, we're, you know, we, we have the same, we like the same things. We are, we're, we're in the same company. We're in the same group where we have the same goals. And they shouldn't see me and be like, I don't, I, I, I don't like this person because she looks this way and see you and be like, oh yeah, I feel more comfortable with you, but not with her. And I think that's an issue we need to fix. And I am, I'll tell you something, Jeff, and you're probably going to get so annoyed by me, but I will, I will bombard you with black creators. I will, I have so many in my head right now. There are people who are making amazing content online and they are all colored and they are all different. And because they're different, they make uh, amazing. They have such a different perspective of life than you do, than, than Gavin does, than Jack does, than Jeremy does. They have a completely different perspective on things and it makes content 10 times better. It makes it so much better. Having black, black people are so, um, I, I can't think of the word, but they, they love so much. They, yeah. they will dedicate. If they love something, they will go after it. They will support you. They will always be there. They will have your back. And to see that the people who would have, who would have our backs be sad because we don't have theirs is upsetting. And it's, it's, it pisses me off. And I, I, I'll tell you something. I will not be silent about it. I have never been silent about it, but trust me, I won't, I'll be even more annoying, but I just, I, I just need us to know that the more diverse we make our content, the better every, the more positive, the more positivity we will have. And I, and I, and I am so excited. I am so excited to see the future of Rusu Teeth with, with the plans we are making, the shows we are creating and, and, and being able to, to see the fault that we have ma makes me so excited for the future because I know it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing because now we have our eyes open. And I think that is the most important thing we could take from all of this. And we shouldn't feel bad about ourselves and we should listen. We shouldn't keep on talking. We should listen to them. We should be on social media. We should be reading the comments. We should be understanding how everyone feels and, and really making content for everyone. We, we should not, we should just be making content for everyone. Every single person, you guys watching, every single person needs to feel like they are being seen. And I will not stand for it that they're not being seen. I just won't anymore. And I am, I haven't. And I will make sure shit happens. And I, I'm going to be, you know, maybe I'm not in a position yet, but one day I will be. And I'm going to, I'm going to make it happen. And, and I think, I think we all have to have that mentality um, at the end of the day. Thank one you. Of, one of my favorite you, Fiona. Fionas um, is Raging Fiona. And I'm I am excited. I really pissed. appreciate that. And I hope <laughs> I'm excited to see you kick some ass. I hope you annoy the shit out of and me. And I'll just I'll just go ahead and make a blanket creator. statement right now. If um that you can. I think if I've you believe in, my... in oh there we go. <laughs> what was that? There you go. I was I was gonna say I was gonna I'm making a blanket statement right now. If if you believe that one race is better than another, or you look at the protests going on right now, the Black Lives Matters movement, and you think that's wrong, you can just go ahead and fuck right off. Uh, we don't need you. We don't want you. And um, that's that's bullshit. Like, educate yourself. Look at what's going on on this planet. And um, and yeah, we, we don't need you. So we, we want to surround ourselves with positivity and love. 
and the idea that anyone's better than someone else because of the color of their skin or the quality of the character. Fuck that. No, fuck you. So if it, yeah, I think I, it, just, it, just, it, it pisses me off. People's like, oh well, there's you know there's some good people. It's like fuck you. No, there's no good people on that side. This pisses me off. I, I'll say Fiona. I I, I uh, obviously agree with Jack. Thank you. Um, but I think that one of the, the the things that's the hardest for me to reconcile here is that um, the picture you just painted of the rooster teeth that we can be. I thought that's who we. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think, and here's the thing, racists, a lot of racists don't know they're racist. Fun fact. They think what they're doing isn't racist, but in fact, the way their minds are being taught, the way their minds are thinking is racist. They see, it, it's, it's prejudice. And at the end of the day, Jeff, whatever has happened has happened. We have to own up to the mistakes and we need to just make a different we just need a change. And I am, I am just so happy that we can have this conversation because we can change now. We can get to a point where there will be change. And I, and I, I, am, I am incredibly happy because if we didn't have this conversation, if BLM wasn't happening, we would not be having this conversation. We might be having it maybe in a couple years, maybe if something else popped up, maybe if I left because I was I was having enough of it we would have had this conversation again but we need we need to understand that at this point there is nothing we can do uh to fix what uh, to, to, to uh, not fix but we there's nothing we can do in the past you have owned up to your mistakes Jeff and I I believe in you I see you as as I I look up to you I see you as an amazing person an amazing creator and I think we can do something amazing and we can be the change that we want to be and we will be the future and it'll happen it'll take some time but it'll happen i swear to god if i'm here it's gonna happen like i don't i don't care like it's happening so that's all i have to say on that i'm so glad you're in my life Fiona. thank you <laughs> and i'm so glad that you're in our company and <sighs> I'm just so glad there are people like you at your age in the world because that are affecting change. Millie's so. Millie's going to be the same same way too. I I I see it. I I love her to bits. Seriously, Millie's going to be the same way. Yeah. I've got a feeling that Rooster Teeth is going to become a lot more diverse, or it's going to be Fiona standing on a pile of dead bodies. I'm it's kind going of kind of one or the other. Something. So whether it's that or that. <laughs> I'm doing something. And that's why we love you, Fiona. Thank and, you. And, and we're better because you're here. And I want to point out, you know, I, through all of these things, which is like, Jeremy you know, I'm, Jeremy's I, muted. I'm I Jeremy talk. And, uh, Jeremy, can, uh, can you hear me now? There you yeah. go. Yeah, you're, you're muted. Well, you know, and there's, I've seen a lot of people say that they want to hear, like they wanted to hear, from me during all that and where i don't know where i was going to jump in after so many powerful things happening there but um what i was doing that whole time too is also extremely important for everyone right now and i was listening you know um there was a lot of time for self-reflection and there's a lot of time for changing and i mean changing not promising change because making promises is really easy and keeping them is really hard for a lot of people and um so you know actually taking the time now to hear uh all these all the perspectives that i've never had a chance to hear before uh it, it really changes uh the way i think about certain things the way i looked at certain things growing up um you know i I was fortunate to not grow up in a place like Jeff did, uh, you know, you know, where I grew up just in my town, I, I didn't even have a, another friend with the same skin color as me until I was almost in high school, uh, or in middle school. And, uh, but even then I still heard jokes and I, and I would always hear jokes about r races and, and different things that would skirt on being really offensive or even just were really offensive 
And um, it never occurred to me until so much later in life how offensive what you think a joke might be is to someone and, and the amount of damage that that can do. Even if you're just repeating something you heard on a show, even if you're just, you heard some joke that was offensive and, and, that, and you find that, that cringe that that makes funny, it really, really hurts people. Um, and, I, and I, like Gavin said, I used to love trying to be that edgy person, try to be that person that, that made jokes that were, were too, you know, were almost too far or definitely were too far. Not just, you know, I'm not saying necessarily against people of color, but of, you know, of all types of people regardless of the situation and um and always and just didn't realize how damaging that can be and that's something that that needs to change and that i've i've I really have changed and uh and again mika was a huge part of that for me um because i was always like fiona said i was always around people when I worked here, like me, you know, and, uh, and, and Fiona came along and I saw, you know, I thought I got hate when I was, when I started. But the thing is, when I turned off the internet, when I closed the comment section and just went out for a walk and just went to the store or something, that hate stopped. Uh, and for people like Mika and Fiona, you know, they opened my eyes to show me that for them, it doesn't. And that's, that's what this movement is working towards. And that's the change that needs to happen and should have happened a very, very long time ago. Um, and a lot of comments, like we're saying now. And even and Fiona said it. She she said you you can find me not funny or anything like that. That's that's not the problem here. A lot of commenters though that have a problem with who someone like Fiona is like to disguise it as just saying, "Oh well, I don't find her funny." Mm -hmm. But that is, and and they're not realizing, or not more importantly, they're not accepting. Mm -hmm that the reason behind that is that they do feel that prejudice, that they, they don't understand. And, you know, until they are willing to, to do what I've been doing in the beginning of this podcast, until they're willing to sit and listen mm -hmm. to, what, to what people have to endure on a daily basis, they're never going to understand and they're never going to be able to change that about themselves. Um, so honestly, right now in these times, there's a lot of things that you can do, but one of the most important things you can do is listen to the people that need to be heard. Um, and that is one of the biggest steps forward we're going to be able to make, or at least that's the start of it. I agree. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's you, you see it, you, you see it. It's very you you see it so much where um, I mean, I, I like to compare myself to Gavin because I feel like we have similar humor and similar play styles and everything. And it's it just, you know, we're fucking idiots. And it just <laughs> it, it just shows it just shows that, you know, sometimes when when Gavin does it, it's funny. But when I do it, it's not that funny. And it's like, well, why? It's the same. We're the same. We're the fucking same person. What the hell? What's what's different about me? And I know what's different. I know what's different. It's it's because I look like this, and because I was born this way. So, I I see it. And even if you want to say, if you want to find any excuse of it, I see it. I also also in terms of just being a female, I have to look presentable. Because the amount of comments on my appearance is uh, disgusting. And it really is disgusting. Um, the amount of let's rolls I've been where people were like, is she sick? Like, why did they let her on camera like that? Fuck that. 
Why why do I have to look okay and why does Jack have to look crazy? Do you remember? <laughs> Damn. That was, that was a, Damn. Love you, Fiona. For real, for real. You could have like, cut to Gavin with his monster beard. Anyway. Well, Gavin looks insane, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on. Could have gone with homeless. Jack looks homeless. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys are great. You guys are all beautiful, but sometimes, like, let's be real here. But at the end of the day, it's, I just wanted, it's pretty much just to say, you guys should not disguise, or you guys should just stop being racist and stop being sexist and stop disguising it as criticism or an opinion. Yeah. Because I, it, it, there's no, we see it. We can see it plain and clear. We can see, oh, there's uh, Fiona lost her footage. Oh, what a dumbass. She doesn't know how to work a fucking computer. What a bitch. Oh, she sucks. I can't believe AH hired her. And then Gavin loses footage. Oh, Gabby lost his footage. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I hope I hope everything's okay. I hope his computer's okay. Do you see the issue there? I see it. And it's, I, I, I know the reason why that is. And I, I'm over it, and I'm I'm not gonna stop calling it out because it's real and it's there, and it needs to be stopped. And if I see it, I'm going to report it. And if I have the ability, I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to tell you right underneath to fuck off because I can't stand it because you are disguising your sexist views and your racist views by saying some stupid stupid comment like that we see it so stop making excuses and just own up to it and leave because we don't want you here leave or change actually you know i don't want to be a hundred percent negative here why don't you change why don't you understand what issues you're having why don't you understand what what you're dealing with in your brain and and really take a step to change why don't you listen uh listen to the voices that need to be heard and and understand why you think that way or why you're coming off that way. I think it's super important to also take care of your mental health. You know, some people find the uh, internet to be an escape. Uh, the internet is an escape to a degree. Uh, the internet is the world right now. This is how we work. This is how we make money. This is how uh, Twitter is my number one news uh, provider. I, I, I'm not going on fucking CNN. I'm not going on Fox. I'm, I'm, I'm looking on Twitter for this. And I know if uh, millions upon millions of people are doing the same. The internet is an escape to a degree. And you have you have your freedom of speech. That's another thing. That's another thing I can't stand. That I, I, does, I have the right to freedom of speech. Like, don't be a fucking asshole. And, 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 and us deleting your comment isn't a violation of your freedom to speak. This is a private platform. You can opt in or opt out. Go on your own Twitter with your zero followers and your zero following and type into the void. You can do that. No one's going to fucking touch you there. <laughs> just fucking do that. Get a diary. You have, know, every just... right, you have every right to step into your front porch and yell into the street just if you want, but you don't have to do it on our fucking site. No, not on our site. Don't fucking do it. I don't care. I don't yeah. want to. I see a lot of people in, in chat right now pointing out that it's not enough to just be not racist. You need to be anti-racist at this point. We need anti, to be trying. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. You can't just say, well, well, I don't believe it. it's like, no, no, you have to be against no, that. You have shit. to 100 percent. No more of that. It's it's over. It's done. Yeah. We can't have that shit right now. Anybody so Run any, the Jewels release their album. Anybody That's any funny, cool. off, funny jokes <laughs> or? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Where do you go, right? You don't. I mean, you don't. You don't. You, I mean, you can't, there's we, no way. We, We've all been dealing with this in our in our own ways. I mean, I know I've had conversations with people, you know, outside of work, and this sucks. I'll be honest. Like this this whole situation, everything like 2020 has been a fuck of a year, and and. I mean, it's it sucks that it took this to bring all this to light and get us talking about it. But I am so happy that we are. I'm so happy that we have amazing people speaking out and pointing to charities and getting getting information out there and shit that I was just blind to. I know, and I'm sure there's plenty of other people have been blind to it. And it, I mean, it's it sucks that it's it's fucking 2020 and we're just now dealing with this stuff. It's like this. How is our, how how is our species? not gotten past this yet we're launching people to space 
all the time now and we haven't dealt with fucking racism really i i gotta tell you jack uh and i would love to hear fiona's perspective on this but um in my white purview i i i can't i can't help but think things have gotten worse maybe they've just gotten more honest maybe racism has gotten uh, has just been emboldened but i gotta think uh we all know the adage shit rolls downhill well i think hatred rolls downhill as well and if the leader of the free world is sowing hatred and i'm not trying to get on a political thing but i'm just just factually if the leader of the free world is sowing hatred and uh sending out dog whistles and uh and creating a safe space for people essentially creating a safe space for people to be open and blatantly racist it can't it's 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 got to be it's we have to cut out the cancer where it exists I agreed. I mean, everything, I guess in a way, everything has its silver lining, right? In that, like you said, people with these awful views are definitely feeling more emboldened because they feel like they have more of a voice. They feel like they're being heard by someone in power. But then the silver lining is we can finally see who all those people are. True. And and when this movement is now starting of the it's not enough to be silent, it's it's everyone's job to be forward and to di direct their attention toward people who are clearly in the wrong, clearly refusing to think progressively about anything. Now those people are finally going to start being called out. Um, or I can only hope that uh, more people from this movement um, will stop being silent. Yeah. Will stop saying, oh, I, I didn't know that person was a bad person. That's, that's a shame. Now, that, now they'll have that, that drive to say, that person's a bad person. Now I can confront that person. And, you know, and, and not always in a, in a form of aggression but in a form of of trying to find out why and making that change uh because people can change you know it, it, as bad as as some people are people can change but they need help they need help to change they need uh they need to know that it's wrong that the way they think is wrong the way they think is twisted and they and they need to be shown not you know they need to be shown why that is wrong and and how every and that everyone is equal and and you know maybe some of that is understanding understanding where it all went wrong right because racism and prejudice are no one's born with it uh -huh. no one's born with that uh -huh. it's taught and um, so once we can, you know, start to root out where that's taught to people and where and where these ideals are coming from and and start to change that view um, is, is finally when when maybe mankind can progress a little more. Agreed. Because it's long overdue. And I also I just want to uh, say um, it's not on black people. Or colored people to really teach you or don't 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 expect them to have to teach you how to behave yeah i i Amen. see this yeah. all the time yeah. where it's like they expect my camera's not fucking focusing okay anyway um <laughs> the, they, they 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 say it all the time they're like you have to teach me how to how to be respectful and it's insane to 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 expect someone just on like a random person on the internet to give you a full lesson that you can you can learn on your own if you really want to st if you really want to change don't expect the change just to happen from someone else you need to go out there and do your own work because i swear to god the amount of times that people keep on asking me oh why was this racist why was that well look it up i'm not here to, i'm not your fucking teacher Go look it up and take the time to realize what you did wrong and I then come back to me and we can have a discussion. Sorry. No, I think, I think that's a, a really excellent point, Fiona. Thank you for making it. Yeah. You look very scholarly and professorial chewing on your glasses. 
I am nervous. This is me being nervous, and I, I ate all my grapes, and I already <laughs> did. And I, already, I was gonna call them comfort grapes, but they're, I didn't. they're gone. The comfort grapes are gone. I was kind of nervously eating that, and now it's the glasses. Disgusting. <laughs> Horrible. Um, well, this has been a, a pretty emotionally charged hour and 17 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if, if anybody has anything else they'd like to share or talk about. Um, um, I'd like to just say that, uh, oh, well, we don't know yet. Never mind. I won't say it. Okay. I know, uh, I just, I guess I'm kind of, uh, lost words right now um I, i'm honestly i'm I, I i wouldn't even know which word to pick i'm stoked to be better i'm so that I'm, was not the word it was not <laughs> the word i'm so i can't wait so. to uh, like chase like further improvement all around yeah i mean like no one no one's happy with where we are right now is what it comes down to and we want to be better and I'd like to think we are starting to take steps to be better. Um, I mean, I, I like to think that Rooster Teeth has been on the path of, of progression and getting better for a while now. I just, I think it's very clear that we have a long way to go and that we can get there. We should get there a hell of a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we have, we have effing around with Ify and Fiona. I've been bringing, I've been showing a lot of, uh, a lot of new creators, a lot of different people on there, and I'm I'm really happy you guys let me get that platform because I'm able to showcase a lot of new talent and a lot of new creators that you guys might have not known and and ones that look very different from you guys. And I'm Fiona, really excited Fiona, about that. Fiona, now is not a time to self promote. We're I'm not self there yet. Um, I'm self promoting. I mean, I around with I understand, and Fiona. I understand watch that it. you want to tell people to watch. Please but, I mean, watch now it. we're on a different level, Fiona. And we have great people on there. Let me tell you. If you thought anything stopped Jack from being an ass. To Fiona. No, it's nothing. I have seen it all. No, I, I love Fiona. And I like Fiona I and I have this really, we have this really interesting relationship that I never thought I would have with someone within Rooster Teeth, where I feel so protective of Fiona at the same time. She doesn't need my protection. She's a <laughs> badass who will kill you. Yeah. But it's, it's so much fun watching her like just be amazing and like i'm so proud of everything she's done since she's been with the company and i've really just i've tried i mean i've tried to take her under my wing as much as possible to, if for whatever situation i can provide knowledge about which mm -hmm. is very very few and um and yeah and feel i'm so proud of you you've kicked so much ass over over Thanks, all these Jay. all these months you've been here and i'm i'm so excited to see what you do and what you become and i hope i'm here for it and i hope Jay. i can help you in some way and so of course you can yeah. you all can much love. I would love, yeah, I would love if you guys could help me. I promise we will. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know what else uh, to say. There's nothing. There's nothing that. else to say right now, at this moment. Yeah, there's just there's just stuff to do at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, it's enough enough talking. We just gotta we just gotta go. I'm ready. Ga like, let's just Gavin, fucking do something. Gavin, go ahead and do the ad read now. Yeah. Stop. Don't uh, <laughs> don't forget uh, that listening is doing. doing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much longer we should go on. Um, maybe should we this just is end a, it? This is. Good... I think we should just leave it. At, we should leave it where it is, and you know, let yeah. people, and hopefully, people listened. Yeah. And I, um oh sorry, Gavin, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say nothing of importance. Don't okay, worry. cool. I'm gonna say something important. Um <laughs> uh if you if uh we have we weren't we didn't really dive into the BLM protests and the riots okay. here, and I think that's an okay thing. I think that's okay that we don't need to talk about it, but I know that we will talk about it, especially and this is not to promo, but like low key it is to promo. We will talk about it at some point. Um, and effing around with Ify and Fiona. I am bringing in a couple people and we will be talking about it with the, yep, yeah, there we go. Um, we will be talking about <laughs> it with other black people and we will be discussing about it and we would love for you to come right now. I don't have an exact date. We are not streaming today, but we will find a time next week or 
possibly tomorrow to talk about it, but it will happen. And it's okay that we're not talking about this on Off Topic. I think everyone has said their piece and I think everyone has, has their own opinions on it. And I think, um, I think it's important to listen to some black people about this because this is really about us. Yeah. And that's why I'm gonna give, I'm gonna use that platform to be able to gather up people and talk about the BLM pro uh, protests and riots and donations and uh, charity and everything. So um, please come join us for that when it is announced. I'll be there. Yeah. Sweet. <clears throat> Please, we need views. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I hope that this podcast helped in some way. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, but it did. Let it be known that there is no place for hate and we will no longer ignore it. And uh, the comments of any Rooster Teeth production will no longer be a safe space for that. Uh, we're not gonna turn a blind eye anymore and we're not gonna ignore these, these things that have very real consequences to the people that are in our lives. Um, we're coming for you. <laughs> and I, I, I I just, just want to say, um, Fiona and Gavin and Jack and Jeremy, I love you. Uh, you guys are my family. I have a family uh, in Alabama, but you guys are my everyday family. You're the people that I'm in. I spend more time with you. Lately, not so much because we're all quarantined, um, but I've spent more time with you people, Gavin and Jack especially, than anybody else in my life um, in probably the last 10 years. And... Uh, I just love you all so goddamn much. And I love every, I love our community. And I just, I promise, I promise to continue to learn and be better if you guys do too. Well, fuck it, I'll do it without you. But I really wish you'd be along <laughs> for the ride. Mm -hmm. I think that we can all grow and learn and become better. And I think it's very clear that our country has a long way to go. But let's get there. So, yeah. Thanks, yeah, lo love you, Jeff. Love you too, Jeff. Love, love you guys. guys. <sighs> See you later. <laughs>